Okay. It's recording. Okay, great. All right, so let's take a look at Twitter here. Show you guys some stuff. Um, that is not Twitter. Okay. So I'm just going to jump over to Twitter. Uh, um, so I, I um, somebody mentioned galactic bowling, so I'm just going to talk about that for a second. Um, talk a little bit about my journey in the games industry. Um, you know, I went to uh, college, uh, got a job as an animator, became a producer, and then uh, ran a company, sold it, uh, came here, started another company. Okay. Um, so that's my story. Uh, <clears throat> very first game that I produced. So I was working at a video game company um, and uh, as an animator. And uh, I was kicking ass. And I was like, man, you know what? This is when I learned I was like really good at doing stuff. And um, so I was like, you know what? I could make my own game. I was like, why am I you know, working for these guys producing their games when I could just make my own game? And so I did in my spare time at night with an international team. This was back in 2005. I um, started working on a game called Galactic Bowling. And it's still on Steam. Who here has not heard of Steam? Who here has heard of Steam? Yay, okay. This, so this is Steam. It's a, um, you know, like a game, an online game store, basically. Um, this is Galactic Bowling. It's the very first game that I ever produced. It was back in 2005. Uh, um, you still have the ice breakers on the ah, screen. Sorry. Um, good thing we didn't get very far. Um, and um, anyway, it's kind of a combination of like bowling and Street Fighter. And uh, because it was my first game, I, I was like, well, I'm going to start with something that everybody already kind of knows. I want to do it stylized, you know, something for everybody and combine it with something that I think is cool. I like Street Fighter at the time, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, stuff like that. And uh, so I just kind of, you know, and my specialty was kind of animation and characters. And so I was really able to kind of like do some really cool creative stuff with the characters. Um, and this was back in the day when none of the stuff that you guys have now is even was even available. Discord, no. None of that. No, no, no. There wasn't even barely any social media at the time. And um, so I was using like Yahoo chat to like work with people around the world. And back then, like an international, a distributed team of international developers was like, no one was doing that. Like the only reason I did it is just because like I didn't have a team. Was just, I was just like one dude working from home. Like, and um, now, you know, now, uh, game, game industry is primarily decentralized, right? Like I had a meeting last night with, with somebody that works for Epic Games in India. And I had to have the meeting at 10.30 a.m. or p.m. because that's when their day starts and our day ends, right? And so um, as you guys go forward in, in your careers, you will work more internationally and you will work using tools like Discord, and stuff like that to collab. We're going to be doing stuff like that in this class too. So this story is really interesting for this game. Um, I developed this game. Um, took me about a year and a half. And uh, we ended up getting a publishing deal um, for about 200 grand to start my very first company and to port that game to the Wii. And uh, the Wii port was called Alien Monster Bowling League. And I believe it is still, look at that, it is still on sale today. By Destineer. And they screwed me over in a contract. I was supposed to be, I was supposed to have made six million off this game. And I ended up making no millions because of a contract. So in this industry, Read, uh, read what you sign. Very important. Write that down. 
Um, anyway, cool stuff. So Steam is cool. You know, it's like a whole place where you can go and like download games and stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, fast forward um, to now. So uh, everybody jump over to this profile, Molly underscore Mordecai on Twitter. If you need to log into Twitter, go ahead. If you don't have a Twitter login, then just look up at the screen. <laughs> just, just, just look up at the screen. So Molly Mordecai is the new game um, that I've finished. It took me a year and a half. We started it um, at the beginning of 2021. Again, with a distributed team from all over the world. About 30 people. And... Um, I, I, uh, we're releasing it soon, looking like on the Epic Games Store, um, because uh, Steam takes 30%, Epic Games takes 12%. And um, also, uh, Steam, anybody can upload a game to Steam, but Epic is, you have to like know them, and it's like curated, so they like kind of take care of you. They don't let just anybody get up there. Um, we're also talking to Microsoft about a first party publishing deal. And then first party and third party, and then um, and then um, talking to Nvidia about um, like a cool marketing deal. They have something called GeForce Now. You guys may or may not heard of it. It's really cool. I'll explain it. So basically, like let's say like you want to play like games that are like PC games that are really awesome using like Nvidia's new technology for like you know, ray tracing and shadows and something called DLSS or whatever. Um, but you don't have the money to buy a $6,000 computer with the latest NVIDIA card. Um, well, you can go on a GeForce Now and you can um, log in. There's free accounts, there's paid accounts, and you can cloud play the games like over the cloud. So it like streams in. So you play on a computer over server and, uh, and it has all the hardware and everything, and, and you can play on any device, your phone, these computers, your Mac, it doesn't matter, right? So you get to like use really awesome hardware, and you don't have to buy the hardware, if that makes sense. So um, when you release a game, when you publish a game, you have to get like a bunch of people involved, like different companies and stuff, because um, marketing a game is super hard, and it costs lots of money if you try to do it yourself. So you want to leverage other companies and stuff. Um, I'll show you guys the trailer for the game. Say what? AMD? Man, I actually, it's on my list to call them. Um, I was actually going to call all of the hardware providers, AMD, Intel, and see if I could, you know, cut a deal or something. That's a good idea, though. So here's a little teaser for the game. I have a full trailer, but it's not released yet. a little bit about that. Um, so Lunar Falls, the company, um, it is built on the Unreal Engine. Who in here has heard of the Unreal Engine? It's so crazy. Just not years ago when I taught this class, I would come in here and say, who all hears the Unreal Engine? No one would raise their hand. Um, it's just crazy to me how knowledgeable students are these days. Um, all right, so, all right, so let's talk about the game a little bit here. So the game is a it's a third-person um, action adventure puzzle platformer. Okay, that's a that's a mouthful. But these days, like when you're describing like the genre of your game, like it can be like a ton of stuff, right? Because there's so many genres out there. It's no longer first-person shooter. It's no longer side scroller. It's like side scroller action adventure puzzle platformer RPG with RPG and RTS elements. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever it is. Um, 
but it's two characters, and uh, they each have different abilities. Um, one of them's magical, one of them's physical, um, and you 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 follow one of them follows the other one. You can switch back and forth, and that's how you like solve puzzles and stuff. They get split up, and one of them has to like do something so the other one can like get through the door or whatever, like set on this trigger or whatever. What you're looking at here is they're wailing on some enemies, these guys with the thimbles on their heads, and uh, Molly over here is launching this potion, and uh, Mordecai is like swinging, and these are um, clones of Molly, so she has a clone potion, she can create clones of herself and they'll like throw potions. Um, inventory, quick inventory down here, so Molly can like craft potions and stuff from herbs that she picks up. Um, all right, so this is the uh, kind of the game screen. So you, uh, you can switch back and forth from Molly to Mordecai on here, and you can adjust the AI mode. So like um, your, your character that's following you, they know what to do when, when, when they're in certain situations. So you can set them to offensive, defensive, support, or nothing. So like if they're just chilling and like an enemy approaches them, they like know what to do or in other situations, they like know what to do. Um, but it has kind of RTS elements in a way where you can like point, you can like tell your AI character, go over there or attack this enemy or do this or do this. Know what I'm saying? It's kind of cool. Um, you can upgrade your character um, with, um, you pick up these candy corns and then you, you upgrade your character along the way. It takes like the whole game to get you pretty far, and if you miss candy corns, then you're kind of screwed. Uh, you can, um, there's alchemy, so you pick up herbs and you craft potions. The potions do different things. There's like stun potions, healing potions, poison potions, invisibility, cloning, explosions, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and then let's see, so, uh, Mordecai has like super moves. You can upgrade him. He like gets stronger and stronger. Molly can glide. Um, so she like glided over that thing. This is a boss fight. So it's like a um, like a magical seed bag. It spits out these seeds, and they grow up to these these little characters here. Uh, they get bigger and bigger. They kind of turn into these walking Venus flytrap. Kind of plants they get pretty massive they chase you around and then the seed bag kind of hops around that's the seed bag there kind of like smashes you and flies across the screen and stuff but that's kind of the gist of it the story is um molly and mordecai uh get turned into dolls by this evil wizard and they have to get through this like house uh, going from, they, they, they get in a window and they have to make their way down to like the basement. Um, and each floor in the house is a different level. And there's, um, you know, bosses and enemies and puzzles and all kinds of stuff and a, and a crazy little story that, that gets in there. It's about 20 levels. It's got about 20 to 25 hours of gameplay. And uh, yeah, it's just a straight up single player. So that's it, man. Excited about it. Going to launch it this year. Um, that's a great question. Uh, so probably looking at anywhere in the twenty to thirty dollar range, which I think is if it were up to me, I'd sell it for a hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? But you can't do that, man. The traditional, um, it, it really, it's kind of crazy, man. Because in the traditional game space, like it just blows my mind how much goes into these games. It takes a lot of work to make something like this. And like it's to sell it for like twenty dollars is just just absolutely blows my mind. But like that's where the market is right now. Like, you know, it's just it's crazy. So your marketing's gotta be on point. If you don't sell enough copies, it's just not even worth it. Um, but that's that's why it's good to like, you know, work for big companies like Blizzard or Meta or whoever. You know, they have massive fan bases already. They sell tons of games. They make tons of money. Publicly traded companies where, you know, investors invest in those companies. And it's, it's much more, they have a lot more going on. They have like merch and all kinds of other stuff. It's much more than just, you know, like 
somebody making a game and selling it. There's like a whole like universe, you know what I'm saying? And now these days it's metaverse. So we're going to talk about that, that fun stuff here in a little bit too. Uh, this one is like 30 people. Yeah, guys, feel free to ask as many questions as you want. This is not a one-sided conversation. Um, all right, I'm just like going over just as much stuff as I possibly can. Okay, another cool thing. So any questions on that stuff? Um, yeah, so hopefully this game does really well. Spent enough time on it, so hopefully I can trade that for that time for some money. Because at the end of the day, you know, your time is valuable, is your most valuable resource. And, uh, you know, you want to trade that for money. Okay. So uh, another thing I want to talk about is um, kind of like the future of like where I see the game industry going. Okay. And this is a term you guys may have heard. You guys heard that? Play to earn. So play to earn is the future of gaming. Before it was go to the store. I mean, back in the day, like when I was playing PC games, um, like when I when I had my first PC, um, you had to go to the store and buy a disc to put in a PC. They don't even have CD-ROMs. I think they actually do have CD-ROMs on these, but but these are a little bit older machines. The new computers they don't even have CD-ROMs anymore. It's all online. Everything's download, servers, cloud, you name it. Um, but back in the day, you used to be able to have to buy CDs um, and, uh, and take it home and play it. And then it became, so you would, you would purchase, purchase in store, right? Take home, okay? That, that was the old business model. Now, now it, it became like, then there was like shareware Anybody know what shareware means? This is probably beyond you guys. Freeware, these kind of things where it was like, you get like a little demo you could play and then you would have to go buy the game, right? Or like play for an hour, then pay and unlock full game, right? So these are like some other business models. And then it was, uh, Free to play, okay? That's probably something you guys know. Um, there are a bunch of big, massive free to play uh, games, and the business model is there is the game's free. Uh, you can get in there, you can play around, you can mine, you can do stuff. But in order to like really, really, really like have fun in the game and like really do some stuff, you have to buy stuff in the game, right? Whether it's in game currency, it's um, you know buying items, skins, hats whatever right that's how those companies monetize those games Some of them they took away. Like they were there before and now they're gone. And you don't get any sort of like compensation for purchasing that DLC now that it's gone. Oh yeah, that is what you have to say. Yeah. So so there's a lot of different things that you can do, right? Free to play is a cool model because it's like the sky's the limit. From like a game design standpoint, somebody over here was talking about you want to do game design, right? That's, that's your game. Like these days it's like, you know, as a game designer, it's your job to not only be a game designer, to design the game, but you have to design the economy, the player economy, the, um, you know, like big, big game companies like Activision Blizzard, like they, they hire economists, right? To come in and design game economies. Um, cause there's, there's like tokenomics and there's all kinds of other stuff, but like, the, the sky is the limit for that stuff. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can design whatever game you want and it can have, it can have any, um, any sort of like, uh, 
uh, model. You can sell anything, you know. Um, but let me talk about play to earn a little bit here. So play to earn is really cool. Uh, this is the future of games where, I mean, it's, it's, it's what it is. Players can make money playing games, right? Um, in general, the model is, you know, you either have to, like, buy the game to get into it or it's free. And then you can, like, do stuff in the game to, like, either capture items, find items, or create items. Um, and those items have value, right? And even crazier is there's this thing called the blockchain. Who in here knows what a blockchain is? See like one hand? Okay, so now we're starting to get into the future a little bit, okay? So blockchains are decentralized networks, okay? And on blockchains, so who in here knows what crypto is? Okay, all right, cool. So cryptocurrency, so a blockchain is a network that has a ledger on it, right? A ledger is just like notes, okay? And cryptocurrency, um, cryptocurrency basically, it's, it says how much cryptocurrency everybody owns, right? If that makes sense. But blockchains can hold other assets as well, like NFTs. How many people in here know what NFTs are? Okay, more hands. All right. So I'm going to jump over here to something called OpenSea. This is OpenSea, okay? And this is Pudgy. Pudgy how many people know what OpenSea is? Anybody? All right. OpenSea is a NFT marketplace. It's actually the largest NFT marketplace in the world. And you can come on here and you can buy NFTs. So I can, you know, kind of look around. And I actually thought Pudgy Penguins was kind of cool. So I'm going back to Pudgy Penguins. Uh, yes. How do you spell pudgy penguins? There you go, pudgy penguins. I don't know why, I just think it's cool. So uh, this is pudgy penguins. It's a collection of, jeez, um, they have almost 9,000 items, which is NFTs, all right? And the floor price is 3.87 Ethereum. How many people in here know what Ethereum is? Okay. How many people in here know what Bitcoin is? Okay, cool. So if you don't know what Ethereum is, Ethereum is just another cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Although Bitcoin really doesn't have any, um, other than just being a digital coin, it has no um, functionality or you can't really do anything with it. You can actually build on Ethereum. Okay, so it actually, Ethereum is like, was like the first cryptocurrency that you could like build apps on and stuff. It's a network, right? And so um, it's, it's also a very popular uh, cryptocurrency for taking payment of NFTs. All right, so this is Pudgy Penguin. So this particular NFT, it's a picture. It has some metadata, okay? Metadata is just like information that is um, held in the NFT. Um, and this NFT is worth Six thousand four hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and here's some some history here of what's been going on with it. Actually, sorry. Here's the activity, people trading it and such. Why is this important? Okay. NFTs are important because they are the future of play to earn. Because if you're in a game and you pick up an item um, in, the, in the future. Actually, it's happening now. It's already, there are a bunch of games in development, but you'll pick up NFTs. So why would you want to pick up NFTs as opposed to in-game items that already exist? What's the freaking point, right? Who in here owns in-game items in a game? You do? What do you own? Skins? Yeah, I've played a lot. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Rocket League skins. Cool. All right. What do you own? Uh, I own some, a lot of skins, a lot of different weapons, and different uh, games. And weapons, skins, different games. Cool. That's awesome. Well, guess what? Those items that you purchased in that game, 
they're only for that game. They stay in that game, right? Those guys, they own you, right? What? Oh, you own stuff too? What do you own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those, those are a little bit different, but, um, but let, me explain, let me explain this a little bit here. So, um, so a blockchain, so this is a blockchain, okay? And um, actually, that is not a blockchain. Uh, give me a game that has items on it. Uh, CSGO. CSGO, fine. All right, so here's CSGO, okay? So CSGO is connected to servers, right? And then here like, are like players and items and things, okay? Um, a blockchain, so this is what's called a centralized network. So this, this can like be attacked by hackers and like all kinds of stuff, right? It's no bueno. And all these items in this game, they can only be used in this game. Um, a blockchain is several nodes that are completely decentralized, but yet they all communicate to each other, okay? So um, if one of the nodes or a couple of the nodes go down, it doesn't matter because all these other nodes still exist, all right? It's, it's decentralized. And everything kind of connects to this decentralized network. So if you own NFTs on a blockchain, you own those, you're the only person that own those, you own those outside of the game, not just in the game, and it's decentralized. So you never have to worry about like, you know, the game getting hacked and your stuff like disappearing and whatever, right? It's really cool. So these items, these NFTs, you actually own them as a digital asset just like you would own like a, an asset and it has value and worth and it, it goes up and down in value, right? Just like you would own like a piece of real estate in real life, right? It's a, it's a physical asset that you own. This is just a digital asset. But the difference between this digital asset and skins that you own in Rocket League is that you own this independent of the game. It is outside of the game. So you can trade it um, or sell it or whatever on independent marketplaces, free market. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just like I could sell my house to you if I wanted to, right? Yeah. yeah, I don't just own a house in Rocket League and I have to sell it within Rocket League or do whatever with it. So it's like outside-based, it's not just stuck in the game. Correct. Yeah, now you guys are seeing it. Um, so that's really kind of the future of games. Um, and I'll explore that a little bit more with you. So if you go to Twitter, everybody go to Twitter, if you can, if you can go, and type in free to play game, and then click on people. So you may be saying to me, "Oh man, like what is this guy talking about? My, what is my professor talking about? I've never heard of any free to play games, or maybe you have. Um, they're they're not out yet. They're all in development." And they're all using blockchains, they're all using NFTs, and all this new technology, okay? And if you search on Twitter, there are thousands and thousands of these games in development. Let's, let's look at one. Um, let's see. Okay, here's one. Uh, Sephrotics, World Calamity, a mobile and PC uh, free to play, I don't know what, the, play to earn, um, free to play to earn, that's what I was just talking about, some of them are free, some of them aren't, um, developed on Polygon with NFTs, play to earn. All right, so Polygon is a blockchain. Polygon is a blockchain. It's an yeah, it's, it's a pretty big one, too. Um, and it's just, this is just a decentralized network. So this is cool. Here's a game. These guys are working on it. It's not launched yet. Coming soon, right? So let's, let's, let's look a little bit more. Let's, let's, let's take a little bit more look in here. 
this is also interesting. Okay, so, so, yeah, this is really interesting. So Burger Bay, okay. Burger Bay is a free-to-play game built on the Roblox platform. Okay, so does, does everybody know what Roblox is? Yeah, unfortunately, I... I hear you. So Roblox is is and becoming more of like a metaverse, um, and I'm sure you guys have heard that term a little bit. Metaverse. Um, a metaverse is just essentially just like a like a like a world where you can like do whatever, right? It's not terribly complicated. I'm going to show you guys a metaverse here in a second. Um, Okay, Knights of Tizonia is a free play-to-earn game using Tezos. Tezos is another blockchain. Um, blah, 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 some knights. Cool. Right, anyway, you get the picture. So t these games are all in development right now. And um, they are the future. So let's take a look at a metaverse. Um, has anybody ever heard of Decentraland? If not, that's okay. I'm going to show you. So this is Decentraland. It is a browser-based. It looks like you can also get it on Windows. Uh, Metaverse. And I'm about to blow your mind. Hopefully. All right, well, that's loading. All right, I already covered free-to-play stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, you, you, that that is a possibility. Um, I think in general, though, it kind of takes a lot to to make these games. And at the end of the day, these games are now becoming they're like they're like businesses. Right. So the whole idea behind you playing a game is like to have fun. Right. So like if you go to like a uh, main event. All right. You, do you know what main event is? Yeah. So you go there, you pay some money and you have some fun. Right? It's the same concept with these games. So when you say scammy, it's kind of like, do you feel scammed when you go to main event and you pay and have fun? You, you don't feel scammed, right? Because you're paying to have fun, right? It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing in this regard. So anyways, um, so this is Decentraland. It's like a, like a metaverse that you can run around in. And there's like people, like a like a VR chat kind of thing. They, they may have a VR. You can like do all kinds of stuff in here. It's like a little bar or something. I'm gonna go outside. So this is where things get really cool. This is when the, the real kind of like blockchain, NFT, metaverse stuff comes into play. So I'm leaving the kind of the space, okay? So let's go out into the open here. Just gonna take a little walk, a little stroll. Let's see what we run into. There's some stuff over there. Okay, so the stuff that's streaming in are user create or player created things. Okay, and basically you can come in here like somebody made that, right? That this castle thing or whatever it is. Um, somebody came in here into Central Land and bought land in this game, bought a plot of land like you could do in the outside world, and then built their stuff on it, right? And you can buy the stuff, you can buy the land, you can sell the land, or you can buy the stuff on the land, you know, or like items within, items within the land. Like I'm in this like, futuristic cathedral um and there's like this guy's got his like airdrop.com or whatever it is all right 
right, so let's let's take a walk even further. This one isn't terribly interesting. All right, here's some more user created stuff. So uh, players have created all this stuff. So it's really cool. You can like go in here and th that's what's cool about this game is the game is actually made by, or the stuff that's in here is made by different players. And um, you can just like explore and like see stuff that like people have built and like collaborate and like just do all kinds of stuff. It's very interesting. I don't know what this is. Like some sort of really cool something. Miami Fashion Week. Altier. So that's another cool thing is that this is for, it looks like Miami Fashion Week. So somebody came in here and like built this out for, um, Okay, so this is where things get really interesting. All right, so I'm in this virtual space that someone created, right? And I come in here and there's like interactables. So if I interact it, I can go to this link and it's gonna open up, it looks like something on NFT. I don't know, if, or something on OpenSea. I don't know if this is an NFT. Yeah, this looks like an NFT. But basically like you can, Yeah, anyway, you, get, you guys get the idea, right? <laughs> I wish I had a horse. So it's like, um, yeah, like a virtual space with like uh, digital assets, essentially. Kind of cool. Well, I mean, like I didn't pay anything and I'm in here running around having fun. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it works. You say Gary's mod? How much are they? Interesting stuff. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that it's uh, it's just kind of interesting um, where things are going. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Okay, so let's talk about um, let's 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 move back into more traditional game space here. Um, so how many <clears throat> how many artists do I have in the room? Okay, we got some artists. Okay, how many of you guys have heard of ArtStation? All right, so back in the day, if you wanted to make like an art portfolio, you would like make your own website and then you would, um, you know, like put your portfolio on there or whatever. Um, these days, it's just about an art station. So you just make an art station page and you send people that. So 
this is like where all the art is, like all the really, really good art. Um, so I'm just going to do a search for like weapons. That is ex that's expensive. It's a lot of money. Doesn't that seem a bit overpriced? And by a bit, I mean but that's very, what, very much overpriced. But that's what the people are placing it at. The people are selling it at that price. Yeah, but like, like I don't understand how NFTs are a sustainable income. Because, like, who's going to buy a penguin digital drawing for, like, $6,000? <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> That's okay. I don't get it either. Um... All right, so I'm just going to click on some of these weapons here. Um, so this is the guy's profile, Alex Sparrow. He's a 3D weapon team lead somewhere. Um, and here are some weapons that he's done. Oh, this is a new person. So these are pretty... These are pretty good. Looks like he had worked on Call of Duty. Um, so you can click on him and look at his whole profile. Damn, he's good. Yeah. So he probably worked for... He's a team lead. I assume he works for some studio... Um, I was going to say in Singapore, but these days, like I said, it, it's totally, um, you know, remote work. People in wherever can apply at any company all over the world and work there. Um, and yeah, it looks like he built weapons for these games. Pretty cool. But there's all kinds of art in here. I mean, there's like... There's concept art too. Um, some of you guys draw. I mean, this is the place for the, the biggest and baddest, best concept art. I'm just going to click on a random one here. This looks pretty good. Aaron Sims. Concept and previs. Pretty cool. But each genre uh, or each um, position in the game industry has its own like community. Like the, there's like top communities for like um, where you can go and kind of like interact with your peers, talk about art or whatever the whatever the thing is. Um, let's see. Any questions so far? Comments? Nothing? All right. Um, I'll just real quick talk about some of the positions in the gaming industry. So we talked about some of them. So we have, um, oops. So we have level design. They basically design the levels, as you guys can imagine. Then there's designer, or we'll just call it game design. And uh, these are the people that kind of like just design like the general like gameplay, right? Or like and like as much as much else as they can. So you're not actually making levels. You're just like more like ideas, right? All right, 
<clears throat> and then we have a uh, character modeler. So you make 3D characters. Um, and then we, ha <clears throat> we have um, concept artists. And these guys design everything from, you know, in 2D, like weapons, you know, um, just whatever, any concepts for any of the, any of this stuff, um, animator. All right. So animating characters, um, rigor. Um, so these guys build the skeletons inside the 3d characters and do the, um, the skin weighting and create controls so the animators can animate them. Uh, we have producers. These guys typically like manage the production of the game. And they, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. And then uh, let's see what else we have. Visual effects. All right, so these guys do like fire, smoke, electricity. Yeah, they do like all the like, you know, yeah, energy effects and stuff. Perfect. Um, so sound is split into two. So you have sound effects and then you have a uh, composer. Music. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, programmer. So we have programmers or code, right? And these days you can do like multiple things. So you can like program or write code or like what we're going to be doing in Unreal is more visual based programming. It's called blueprints. So if you imagine like you have nodes and you drag them around and connect them to each other and it's like this node is like if this happens then this happens kind of thing. It's a really good way to kind of like start with code and like learn how like code works but like in a visual system and you can make an entire game using those nodes which is pretty cool. <clears throat> All right what am I missing here? I would say in general, like the core, you know, the core people are, you know, you definitely need to have like some sort of management. You need to have level design and game design. Uh, you need characters. They have to be animated. Um, you have to have visual effects. You have to have sound. Um, in general, this is pretty much the core, the core stuff. But there are game companies that have like, you know, hundreds of people and they have some like, you know, oh, I forgot, uh, environment art. So environment artist makes the 3D models for like, it could be like weapons or environments or whatever. Um, that's also quite important. So these are some some positions. Yeah. Questions? No questions? All right, you guys. Um,